Hi everyone. It's me, Nate. Hi, Nate. Hi. How's it going, bud? Patrick. Patrick. But yeah, we're still playing the sponge. This is episode I don't know. We are almost in the last tr section. I guess it's, yeah, there's three sections. So we're about to start the third section. So um, thank you guys for sticking with us. Tomorrow I get to record uh, two video games for my Let's Plays. I'm gonna go back to, because I'm trying to use this as like an excuse to start this back up and then an excuse to beat some games. So I was gonna start up uh, Crash Bandicoot 4 on the show, and I was going to uh, return to Resident Whoa, Evil 3 Remake. SpongeBob. Now they're back. Here's your go spatula. I don't speak. Spatula. Spatula. One more socks here. I turned on. Whoa, stop. <laughs> okay, yeah, I only have five more. So we got two spatulas from Patrick. That's fine. We're just gonna. I got an idea. I got an idea. We're gonna bubble roll. We're gonna sponge ball all the way to the kelp forest. Here we go. Woo. Roll, roll, roll the sponge. This, the controls in here in the sponge ball are I so weird. I never liked the sponge ball either. Oh crap! See, see how bouncy he is. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but or Vince knew this, but you can hit a secret button on top of the crusty crab. I don't know how to access it. It's like on, it's literally on the vent there. Yeah. That if Bubble you buddy, do it, I bet the next move you teach me will be the best one ever. You know, I think I'm gonna do SpongeBob's dream first. Fuck it. It's, it's more fun. SpongeBob. And then we'll end it with the Dutchman. Super pinky shake on it. I would if I had pinkies. Here, I'll blow you some. Yeah, maybe later. Now pay attention, SpongeBob. This bubble's a doozy. Paying yeah, my rocket entire sponge. salary and attention. When you're not moving, press this button. And you'll blow a bubble that you can yeah, steer the as bubble. it flies I through remember. the air. Wow! Aim carefully, though. You've only got a few seconds. Oh, that's of what we're supposed to do to get on top of the crusty crowd. We have to do this. Okay, we're gonna try this first before we do it. I'm a level. bubble blowing machine. Because what you're supposed to do is aim at the jump bubble bucket. Power. One. Let's do the top one because it's funny. Sometimes pushing a simple button is the most satisfying. Final one right push, in the push, 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 push. And then there should be ones on the other side of it. Or am I thinking of something else? Because I know you hit those three and... Oh, yeah, that spawns this. I'm done. Yeah, there's just one right here. The easiest to just back here. So, it's so easy. And then... I, yep, there's the underpants. So you have to be really careful. You got one, two... Wow! Six it's pairs of underwear. Life. I am one unbeatable sponge. I feel like a new sponge. <laughs> I think you need. Oh yeah, you can't go to the movie theater yet. May I help you? Oh no! Forty thousand shine. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go to the sponge dream level because it's more easy. Are you feeling sleepy? Wait, didn't you say you could hit the top of the? Crusty Crab. Oh, wait, crap. Ah, oh, fuck, I hit B instead of A. I missed it. I was confusing something else, but we can, we'll do the Crusty Crab thing when we get back. We're gonna do the SpongeBob Dreamscape. And we don't need to see if SpongeBob falls. I feel asleep. you, SpongeBob. I'll go sleep too. <laughs> but Nate woke me up to do, to do Let's Play. I actually woke up on my own, but Ow. I think I could have rolled over and went back to sleep. But instead, I was like, I'm gonna give up. Ouch, yeah. <laughs> Comes to they just really wanted to use what their old character models on a level. That's all this level is, I swear. Dream, dream bubbles. I'm surrounded by dream bubbles. Delicious crabby Gary, patties. what are you doing here? Oh, so I'm dreaming. Well, then, this looks a lot I'm better than the, the PS2 one. one. Thanks, Gary. Well, yeah, it does make me look more so rugged, so doesn't it? Remastered. Even though the, the joke about him getting a mustache doesn't really work, it's a lot lower. It's like he's eating his mustache. More tasks? Well, I could use more golden spatulas, but where should I start? Also, how does he take the golden spatulas out of his you dream? Mean each dream bubble and give has a golden spatula plankton? in it? Does he just pull them out of his head? Oh, yeah. ready! Yes, Gary, Maybe I'll be he, careful. Like, tells Plank, like, 
Here's some metaphorical spatulas <laughs> I, I found in my head. They're really, These work. <laughs> yeah, they're really cool and very real. I and love opening stuff. presents. Alright, that box. And he's like, just the idea of these specials <laughs> excites me. <laughs> I really like the voice actor for Plankton, though, he's funny. Ow. Oh, whoa, Nelly! Look you know how happy he is falling to his death in his own dream. It's weird how often I have a reoccurring dream that I'm falling, and I have the sensation that I'm falling, so I wake up. And you fell off the bed. No! <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Uh, what reoccurring dreams do you have, Vince? Um, I don't know if I really dream anymore, or at least I never remember them. Yeah, that is that is true of a lot of people. Because your subconscious is weird and it like it doesn't save them all the time. Really, Spongeroni? Really, buddy? This is supposed to be the hardest level in the game, guys, so it is a little bit tough to get to where you're going, but then when you're at the place you are get to going, then it's easy. And go! I feel like the... If you talk about your dream right after you like wake up, yeah, you can remember it. But like, you're always gonna forget about like what you dreamt about. Like, yeah, within the 15 minutes. Of Unless it's up. just really weird, because I have some very memorable dreams that are just extremely weird. Uh, there we go. Also, oh crap! I forgot about that. Oh shit! He's so happy. Uh, I want to start watching more TV, so I'm going to start watching How I Met Your Mother again in, like, when it comes to, like, December or November. Yeah. I'm going to start that back up, because I haven't watched it all the way through in about, like, when, when, was, when was the finale of How I Met Your Mother? A long time ago. Yeah, that was the last time I watched all of it. And then when we were in, in Portland that one time, uh, I watched, like, the first five seasons of Y'all again. My when we were staying at Piper's? Yep. You watched five seasons yeah. of How I Met Your Mother yes. in three days. Yes, I did. <laughs> it was so worth it. All right. Hurt. Ooh. Okay. No! <laughs> and it just despawned me immediately. I just remember the one scene uh, when Jason Sudeikis is, he has to, he's, uh, he's you know, uh, donating sperm. Oh, he, he's going to use the sperm. But he's going to, you know, shoot his goodness into a jar and then he's like, he's like really calm at first. And he's like, okay, man, you can do this. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden he sees someone in the corner. What you're about to do, I did in here a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's shocked. And then another guy shows up. What you're about to do in here, I did this morning. And he's even more shocked. And then like five more people show up. What you're about to do in here, I did like Three five minutes ago. ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so funny. And then he just leaves. Uh... Man, I love that. That scene is so funny. It's gross if you think about it that way, but it's still funny. You're about to spank where tons of people spank. Yeah, it's a weird concept. It's a spank room. It, it reminds me, there's a show called The Last Man on Earth with uh, Will Forte, Kirsten Shaw, and a few other people. And it was really stupid. There was one joke that I thought my joke was original until I watched the the show. Because Kirsten Shaw wants uh, Will Forte's character to, you know, have a kid with her. But he really doesn't want to. I hit the wrong button. I'm going to salvage it. Uh, so she creates a room called the Master Batorium. Shit. Which is just specifically a room for him to nut. Yeah. Which It's just the weirdest thing. Because when she paints the walls, it's like really grotesquely drawn people all <laughs> over the walls and, he, and Will Forte's like oh I can't yeah, do it anymore right yeah it's it's such a that scene's so funny that was also a really dumb show for its advertising because how it was advertised like originally was on Fox it was supposed to be Will Forte like wakes up and everybody's dead in the on the entire planet and he's like oh sweet I'm the last man on earth I can do whatever the hell I want so for the first three episodes of the series it is like that when he's just like stealing cars and he's breaking into like convenience stores and eating 10,000 pieces of beef jerky mm -hmm. and breaking into movie theaters and watching whatever film he wants and it starts out so normal and then all of a sudden oh crap wrong button it. no I was supposed to I, I did this in the wrong order <laughs> uh, 
but it was advertised like that, and everyone and I like I remember watching the first few episodes, thinking this is a funny concept. They only have to cast one person. This is yeah. this is such a weird movie or TV show, and then all of a sudden, like three episodes in, he finds Kirsten Shaw, who is allegedly at that point the last woman on Earth. So he thinks he has to, you know, keep the human race alive by breeding with her, but she's insane. So the whole joke is that he's like, for the next few episodes, he's like, ugh, I, I don't want to have to be the savior of mankind of this lady, ugh. Yeah. And it builds up like that for a while until like the th a secondary plot twist when they find another guy who survived the, the explosion that wiped everybody out. And then she all of a sudden becomes attracted to him instead of Will Forte. And then all of a sudden he's like, no, I'm a good guy. You should date me. Look at all the things I can do. I forged food for us. You know, one of those things. Yeah. And one of the dumbest jokes about the entire series is they kept casting people just to kill them off in an episode. And it was always people that, like, were really talented or were big budget names. Like, uh, Will Ferrell is in one episode. And he shows up just to get killed immediately. But they had to pay him for like 10 minutes of an episode. How am I supposed to do that? Here? I could have sworn that if you hit that paddle, it drops a spatula down this ramp. But whatever, we'll get it in a second. Come, <coughs> come surfing. I really love the sandy section of this, the dream level, though. It's very fun. It's probably my favorite part of this level. Yeah. Is you like go to the Alamo. Oh, wrong button. But, uh, it was a good it's show shiny. until it got really stupid and then it got cancelled to the end. Fox never likes keeping their shows, though. I've noticed this. Like, if it isn't a Simpsons or a Family Guy, it's like, nope, you're out of here. Oh, um, speaking of which, I, I just watched a Fox peasants. show that I thought was going to be really good and it got cancelled after season three. Which one? Uh, Lethal Weapon. Oh yeah, I was watching some of that. I got cancelled? Yeah, after season three. Fox, you guys... Oh. So, season one and season two were really good, but apparently uh, the guy who plays Martin Riggs mm -hmm. uh, like, got really toxic. Oh. Uh, like, offset or, like, onset, but, like, not shooting. Yeah. Um, but if you listen to him, he says that it's... Uh, uh, Damon Wayne's uh -huh. wow. like, your dream is was the toxic one. Okay. And how he felt like Everything he was Texas is big. a even dreams. top notch actor then you're who just didn't the have right to person to reach the, rules, the spatula to on top of didn't even have to my show dream, up if he didn't my want rules. to like I'll get that so spatula it made it really hard for him to work with him. But so they basically the two main actors fucking hate each other. Yeah. In real life. Yeah. Bam! So it made Someone it really difficult, and uh, Fox ended up firing uh, the guy who plays Martin Riggs uh, okay. at the end of season two. Okay. And so they replaced him with another actor. The reason why it failed is because I think everybody, well, everybody loved his character on the show. There's nothing like the so smell like, of bubbles him, in we're the not morning. Watching. It smells like. Uh -huh. Victor. And I did the wrong one. They didn't even give the replacement actor a shot. Perfect. And I thought it was still really good yeah. with the replacement actor. Like it wasn't the same character. They weren't trying to play it off as the same character. But uh, the replacement actor did a really good job. So the problem I have, while wow, the textures are not loading, uh, the problem I have with. Uh, shows nowadays is it's so easy for the network to just oh oh it's not the best show ever plug it's gone yeah. it's it's out you're done and that's the case with sitcoms live Texas. action shows action shows cartoons if it's not the a bajillion dollars of income an episode they're just gonna cancel it which I really hate because there's a lot of shows that I'm getting into that I know are gonna you know get the plug pulled on them in a few seasons and also, I heard really bad news about the Orville this morning, which pissed me off. Canceled? It's on indefinite hiatus. So, canceled. Yeah. Because what happened was, they made two seasons. The first season was really good. The second season was phenomenal. I loved season two of the Orville. Like, they upped the budget a lot. They upped all the issues they were tackling. They upped a whole bunch of other 
like very weird quality things about it that it wasn't like oh this is just some raunchy Seth MacFarlane show it's like oh this is a, a Star Trek it's better than Star Trek in some Squirrels? aspects which We're it was and then after season 2 Fox said your episodes cost way too much money no, we're not doing it anymore. And they left the series I on a cliffhanger. So, Seth MacFarlane and the rest of their producers shopped around you and were like, asleep. okay, we really need, I want to do a season well, three, I want to wrap up Blue Sands, I want to do other things. I'll do it so, fast. so they Why contacted Hulu. And it was supposed to, season three was supposed to air on Hulu, September 2020. Then COVID happened. Yeah. They were done filming about three or four episodes, allegedly. And then with the COVID outbreak, they just stopped filming, and Seth MacFarlane was like, oh, I'm gonna, we're gonna keep, oh shit, I didn't hold that for long enough. We're, you know, yeah, see, it says season three premiere 2020, even on IMDb. But what happened was they filmed half of it, and COVID happened, so they weren't allowed to film, and then they realized that they just spent a lot of their budget that Hulu gave them on trying to get season three off the ground during these times. Yeah. And then the shittiest part is Seth MacFarlane is like pulling out of his own money huh, and doing all kinds of, well, I mean, he's one of the producers, but like more of his own money and doing a whole bunch of other crap to try to get it off the ground. And then in an interview about six days ago, he's like, yeah, it's not going to get off the ground for a while. But I don't see how they, what really pissed me off about that is they use the term indefinitely. Yeah. What does it definitely mean? Well, it depends like, on who you like talk what, to. What is the legitimate uh, definition of indefinitely? Sometimes indefinitely means forever. Sometimes indefinitely means for now. Okay, I'm gonna look for an unlimited or unspecified period of time. Yeah, that literally means forever or until I feel like it. That's just that's a stupid word. It's these. Stupidest word to use. I'm, like, I'm to say, so pissed because like, that show kicked ass. And did you watch any of season two? No, I haven't seen any of okay. episode ever. Please, you're gonna okay. Here's where your friend Nate is gonna confuse you with this sentence. Watch the two seasons, you'll love it, but then you'll be pissed that it's on hiatus because it it literally took elements of Star Trek that I was like, wow, this is good, and built upon that with fun like satire level. Though. I'm a huge Star Trek fan, so I, really I don't know if you can say it's better than Star Trek. Okay, I liked it better than the newer Star Trek. It's not as good as... I haven't seen the newer Star okay. Trek. It's, I liked it. I haven't seen Discovery or Picard yet. Okay, I've only seen two episodes of Picard, because I don't have CBS All Access. I ain't paying for that. I already pay for Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN, and Spotify. Like, I'm not going to add another one to that list. I already paid for Amazon Prime, Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, VGM, <laughs> oh, you, uh, what games did you get in your VGMs recently? Have you got them recently? Um, my first box, my first return box is actually in the mail on the way here. Right nice. So, good times await your Oh no, I, I just put uh, 64, Dreamcast, and NES. Which are your three just favorite consoles. I, I, those are the three consoles I want to collect the most for. Mm -hmm. And... Honestly, I still have a lot of filler too for the N64 and yeah. uh, NES. Oh, the, the N64 had so much weird filler. And I know so. it's, a, it's a it's a sentence that's weird, but they did. Like, if you want, like, perfect example, the Dreamcast and the N64 have one big thing in common. You want to know what that thing in common is, Vince? What's up? It's racing games. There is so many racing games on the Dreamcast and so many racing games on the N64. Well, that's all for Birdie. And sports, of course, because sports yeah. are on every fucking console for filler. So, unfortunately, if you're trying to get a complete N64 library, you're going to have to buy, like, five Maddens. Well, see, that's what the gym's for. <laughs> yeah. What's this? Madden 99? Sweet. I haven't bought a game for my N64 in seven months, and I haven't bought a Dreamcast game in, like, six months. Yeah, I remember the stupid cows. I bought a lot of Dreamcast games. I don't think I really have any filler for them to give me. In Good Dreamcast. Because all the games that I no, need right I now. Hit, I hit it correctly. I wasn't supposed to do that. I was supposed to do this. Are above $15. Yeah. Like, so I, don't, I don't know if they'll. From what I remember, I don't really. Unless you got a partner pack, then you weren't really getting anything above $10, 12 bucks. Yeah. 
So I'm predicting you're gonna get a lot of shovelware that you already have, which I will gladly pick off your hands. I don't think I'll get things I already have. Maybe like a game or okay. two. But uh, I put in there. Actually, I don't know if I did it right. I know I updated my Dreamcast to because I know what we had. Yes. Um. Wasn't what we both had. Correct. Or what individually we had each. Sorry, I'm focusing. This is a so, really thin platform. I have to go up. Just because like there were a lot of games that we didn't have check marked that like I had but you didn't, so yeah. that if we did get it, you could grab it. Exactly, or vice versa. But that's how I was able to get Banjo Kazooie. Well, uh, I mean, I love that game. I love Banjo Kazooie. I want to do Banjo Kazooie or Two E versus eventually. Here's the big cow pie. It's such a weird level. Yeah. My NES collection is not up to date there. <laughs> well, you're probably going to get Blades of Steel or... So, this month you probably have something you can grab off me. Alright, sweet. Good. I'm happy. I might go to Game World after I hang out with you. Do you, you want to hit up Game World together? I have to get my uh, mask out It really depends on what I'm allowed to do with the baby. Okay. If not, I'll it go by myself because I haven't gone to uh, G World in about two months. And the last thing I snagged was... I got, I got, um, there we go, I kind of clipped up there, but we got both the spatulas in Sandia sections, that's what matters, um, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, okay good, that was weird, but I love the NES as well, I haven't bought an NES game since Blades of Steel, Blades of Steel, Blades of Steel, that's what he says. Okay, like, have you played Blades of Steel recently? That's what the announcer guy says when you fire it up. Like, when you hit start. We you... both got that one. Yes, we do. But when, like, you fire it up, uh, the announcer guy goes, Blades of Steel. Just like that. And then you fire, and then you pick your game and you play it. Come on, Sponge. Come on, Sponge. There's a game on here that doesn't appear on um, my price guide for okay. Dreamcast games. But it's on the uh, possible games to get list on VGM. Nice. What is it? Cool Herders. I've never heard of Cool Herders. For the Dreamcast? That was a way more difficult platform to go up than it ought to have been. Back to SpongeBob. And I'm wondering if a Japanese title accidentally made it onto the list here or something like that. And then we get a nice Famicom game. Well, you can play Famicom games no, on Dreamcast. Your... Oh. Oh. Well, maybe. I'm gonna see if cool. Alright, everybody, on the next installment of Sponge, we are gonna probably record one more episode, maybe two, maybe three, and we're gonna press through the dream. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna see you in the next dreamy night, night time.